welcome to CEC Gurukul. I am Shankar Kumar. I teach history at uh, Hindu College in the Department of uh, History, of course, uh, Delhi University. And uh, we are here today to uh, know about some of the early conceptualizations and institutions in uh, ancient or early Indian medicine. When we say early Indian medicine, what I have in mind is uh, basically what we today know as Ayurveda, because uh, uh, these treatises of uh, Ayurveda were uh, compiled by around the beginning of the common era. Some uh, uh, where, where uh, some, some compilations were done even uh, centuries prior to the beginning of the common era. You must have heard the names of uh, uh, Ayurvedic uh, uh, authors like Charak, uh, Sushrot, uh, Vagabhat. So, these are uh, some of the names uh, who are uh, regarded as, uh, uh, as uh, the big physicians in ancient India. Uh, in fact, Charak, Shushrut and Vagbhat are regarded as the big three uh, amongst the several uh, Ayurveda Acharyas or uh, physicians that we get to hear of from different sources in ancient Indian history. Now, uh, why, uh, why uh, is it that we are talking of conceptualizations and institutions uh, is because uh, it's it's not to know about the therapeutic aspect of ayurvedic prescriptions or the medicinal aspect of it in fact uh, uh, why i do so is to highlight the cultural and uh, social presumptions uh, that go beneath uh, such uh, conceptualizations and uh, establishment of institutions in fact uh, these treatises, on account of the uh, on account of the abundance of social and cultural data contained uh, in these uh, medical treatises, uh, it's it's a very good entry point to to uh, have a good peep into the culture and uh, society of ancient India. In fact, uh, some of the commentators and some of the modern uh, publications, uh, very reputed publications, and we shall be quoting them, uh, have highlighted this particular aspect of the interpenetration of the uh, social and cultural data in medicinal texts and even otherwise or uh, vice versa. So, <coughs> if you pick up some, uh, some uh, say uh, treatise on mathematics, you might as well end up uh, uh, finding uh, very hard uh, and critical uh, medicinal presumptions and data in them. Similarly, uh, if, for example, if you read uh, Vagabhat's uh, book on uh, ancient Indian medicine, Ashtang, Hirdaya, Sanghita and so forth, uh, you will find uh, some uh, calculations uh, that have been uh, done. Uh, of course, using very hard uh, uh, principles of combinatorics, which, uh, which were uh, uh, in fact uh, explained centuries later. We shall uh, be talking about all these things and therefore, let us uh, let's, uh, try and understand the broad perspective of today's lecture and that you can see on your slide. Uh, I am quoting uh, G. Jen Muhlenbeld who is one of the uh, one of the well known authorities on uh, ancient medicine he has uh, put together several volumes on uh, ancient uh, indian medicinal uh, literature and uh, the uh, the uh, name of the book you can see on your slide g jen muhlenberg is the author a history of indian medical literature this is from the uh, first volume uh, and uh, uh, this is what uh, i am quoting uh, here Indian medicine is thoroughly embedded in the culture of the subcontinent and cannot adequately be studied and understood without acquaintance with its history and ways of thought. Conversely, knowledge of medical concepts will certainly illuminate problems that would otherwise remain obscure. Medical treatises abound in material relevant to cultural history and many non-medical uh, texts contain data pertaining to medicine, which demonstrates that medical science constitutes an integral part of the Indian civilization. 
and uh, it is this particular uh, uh, you, you can say uh, standpoint from where we are trying to uh, look and talk about uh, ancient Indian medicine. So, let us move on from here and try and see uh, the point that I was uh, referring to and the point was regarding the interpenetration of data. Let us uh, let us first uh, uh, try and place them in time. For example, uh, if you say Charak, so Charak uh, uh, authored books like Charak Sanghita uh, which is dated uh, to uh, 3, 4 centuries prior to the beginning of the common era. Susrosh Sangheta is penned by Shushrut and uh, uh, estimates uh, put together by the historians about its date uh, is around the beginning of the common era. And then we have the uh, Ashtang Hridaya Sangheta uh, by Vaghbhat uh, who wrote say around 7th century uh, in the common era. And uh, Vaghbhat's work uh, states that uh, basically what he is trying to do is to uh, make uh, Charak and Shushrut readable to the common audience. And so, he uh, systematized uh, the details of uh, Charak and uh, Shushrut and uh, made it more readable. In fact, uh, uh, there are some communities in Kerala even today who, who uh, remember the entire uh, uh, Ashtang Hridaya Sanghita by, by heart. So, so uh, the oral tradition uh, through which uh, these teachings continued to be transmitted across generations is something that has come down to us even today. And uh, one of the most, most uh, noticeable thing about uh, uh, ancient Indian medicine or Ayurveda is that it is a continuing tradition. So, in contrast to the Greek uh, medicine uh, which is so famed otherwise uh, Indian uh, medicine or uh, Ayurveda uh, is a surviving tradition, it is a continuous tradition. Uh, Greek uh, medicine could not quite survive the test of time and uh, in fact whatever we know of the Greek uh, medicine is uh, through its residues that uh, are there present today in the Islamic medicine. So, uh, you know uh, the period of around say <coughs> 8th century common era to around 10th 11th century common era uh, is regarded as the golden age for uh, Islamic literature and culture and it is around this uh, period of time that uh, the Arab uh, uh, society and rulers they, they, they got uh, the knowledge uh, compiled uh, from around everywhere, be it uh, Greece, be it uh, India. So, uh, these Ayurvedic treatises were uh, translated uh, in their language. Similarly, Greek uh, uh, treatises on medicine were also translated. Uh, significant developments towards hospitals and uh, the cosmopolitan aspect of hospitals also took place around this period of time. We shall be talking about it that uh, even uh, Charak mentions brilliantly about uh, what the hospital building should look, look like, uh, uh, how its staff should behave, uh, what should be the requirement, what all requirements they should meet, uh, even the pharmacy should be uh, attached uh, to, the, uh, to the hospitals. So, uh, we shall uh, be talking about all, uh, all those which generally are not illuminated in the mainstream writings of uh, ancient Indian history. So, let us come to the uh, point that we were uh, trying to understand and that is that these uh, medicinal uh, treatises of early India are rich in terms of data, in terms of facts, in terms of uh, hard data from other disciplines also. Uh, when we say disciplines, what I have in mind, although uh, I am using a term which, which uh, became uh, fanciful in the 19th, 20th, uh, 19th and 20th centuries, uh, but uh, these are the distinct subjects. They were understood as distinct subjects. Mathematics was understood as a distinct subject. Medicine was understood as a distinct subject. Uh, so, uh, grammar was in, uh, philosophy, grammar, they, they were all understood as distinct subjects even in ancient India. But there is fair degree of uh, wholesomeness uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in preserving whatever we knew about them in terms of uh, awareness uh, in the scholars who are otherwise known as uh, medicine person or mathematician 
uh, or uh, grammarian and so forth. So, it is this aspect, it is this interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary uh, component of uh, knowledge creation and dissemination that we are talking about. So, uh, that that is how we, we, we get to know uh, that uh, the content was so rich in terms of mathematical or gram, uh, grammar data. And let us see uh, some of the illustrations that I have for you. Uh, uh, now, you can see on your slide. Uh, it is uh, about Vaghbhat uh, that I was referring to 6th century, 7th century uh, common era is the is the uh, time generally assigned to, uh, to Vaghbhat and uh, he is the one who wrote uh, Stang Hirdaya Sangita a famed uh, medical treatise in which he compiled the works uh, that uh, were already done by Charak and Shushrut. Uh, who otherwise had compiled uh, uh, Ayurveda uh, as a, a distinct kind of systematized discipline uh, combining several uh, segments of uh, healing techniques and uh, uh, medicines and practices. They were all combined and systematized into uh, one uh, wholesome body of knowledge that we know as Ayurveda. Now, Vagabhat uh, in one of his uh, chapters uh, in the book that I referred to describes how the six ras or savers can be uh, differently combined. And um, as all of us know that Ayurveda uses several categories of uh, its formulations and uh, uh, its uh, uh, pharmacy and uh, even uh, the categorization of plants, uh, animals. Uh, or medicines or uh, the components that overall, for example, you must have uh, heard of the cuff, vayu and pit, uh, the tridosh uh, uh, thing. And so, uh, while talking of the six ras uh, or savers, uh, Vagabhat uh, uh, mentions that uh, um, an overall 63 distinct formulations can be, uh, can be arrived at using uh, the six ras. Uh, in different uh, combinations. So, uh, he in, in Ashtang Hridaya Sangita, he does not uh, explain the actual uh, formula or practice by which he arrives at this magical number 63, uh, but we get to know uh, about uh, the calculation part of this uh, principle of combinatorics much later in a 12th century common era text uh, penned by Bhaskar and we know uh, of the famed Leelavati which was written of course by Bhaskar in 12th century common era. And uh, it is here that we get to see uh, the method deployed to explain this. And uh, as you can see on your slide, uh, what is done <coughs> to arrive at the different uh, combinations uh, in which uh, six different variables can be put into or can be uh, uh, the way it can be worked out is you uh, in the place of numerator you write uh, 6 to 1 that is from uh, highest number uh, using decreasing principle. So, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and the numerator uh, would be uh, put in the opposite order that is from lowest to highest 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, if there are 6 variables that is how you do it. If there are 7 variables you can go up to 6, 5, 4, 3, two, uh, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, and then uh, depending uh, uh, which uh, combination you are trying to take. For example, if you take just one variable, so 6 by 1 uh, would be just one possibility. Similarly, if you are taking uh, two variables then uh, 6 by 1 uh, and 5 by 2 you do that. And so, when, when you do all these uh, six uh, ways in which it can be <coughs> it can be calculated. So, the figure comes 6, 15, 20, 15, 6 and 1. So, the last is uh, that if you take all the six variables together of course, there is only one way in which you can uh, you, you can uh, get the result. And so, all six taken together would be just one, uh, one uh, sample. So, if you take just one variable uh, at once, there would be 6 possibilities. So, 6 plus 15. So, that is how it goes. And the total comes out to be 63. And this is explained in uh, Bhaskar's Leelavati 
around say seven eight centuries uh, subsequent to uh, to uh, Waghwat's time, and uh, just see here that Waghwat is getting the calculation right uh, centuries before it is actually explained by a mathematician in a mathematical treatise. The point that I am trying to make here is that uh, the knowledge that uh, existed in ancient India and that was seamlessly used by uh, practitioners of uh, say medicine uh, is, is amazing and uh, such, such things uh, tell you about the nature and character of uh, knowledge dissemination and creation and also preservation. Uh, in ancient India. So, that is one sample. Similarly, let us look at the other sample that I am trying to illustrate in order to substantiate the point that there was heavy dose of transdisciplinarity or interdisciplinarity uh, in the way knowledge was uh, created, uh, preserved and disseminated. So, this is uh, this you can see on your slide, this is about interpretation of medicine and grammar. Now, this uh, I am taking from Sushrut uh, Sanghita, of course, penned by Sushrut uh, around what is the time? Time is around the beginning of the common era. Now, in Sushrut Sanghita, there is a catalog of meats uh, and uh, animal meats were uh, used as uh, medicine uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in certain diseases. And, uh, what he does uh, and this, this uh, particular thing uh, uh, is taken from Francis Zimmerman's book uh, uh, Jungle and the Aroma of Meats and uh, this is uh, a work on uh, th this is a work that highlights the accentuated uh, ecological underpinnings of uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of say uh, Ayurveda and uh, in this uh, what he does is uh, uh, in this catalog of meat, uh, there is a range of uh, uh, verses uh, and prose uh, which mentions about different animals and uh, uh, the way in which they can be used to say uh, heighten uh, the humors, uh, cuff, uh, vayu, pit or lower uh, uh, their, uh, their presence. And uh, that is how the treatment goes that if uh, someone is having uh, a very high uh, cuff and the vayu component is, uh, uh, is uh, somewhat low, then the vayu component has to be increased and uh, uh, an equilibrium has to, has to be arrived at. And this is how uh, the, uh, the treatment uh, or healing in uh, Ayurveda goes. So, what he does is uh, he uh, removes or uh, he replaces uh, all the literary paddings that go in these verses uh, uh, in, in uh, catalog of meat uh, in Shushrut Sangheta and uh, replaces it, uh, replaces them by uh, plus or minus sign. So, uh, there are, uh, uh, for, for, for example, I will just explain uh, and this you can see on your slide. For example, there is uh, this reference like Marut Nashan. Now, Marut Nashan, Marut all of us know is wind and this has of course, the reference uh, to Vayu, Kaf Vayu and Pit and Nashan. Nashan is uh, something that uh, is killed, something that is calmed down, something that is reduced. So, uh, expressions like this uh, abound and uh, in some other words, uh, some other uh, uh, synonym of uh, nation uh, would be used and that you can see on your slide for example, her, han, ghana. So, uh, such uh, literary paddings are there, such literary uh, you can say uh, alternatives are there, synonyms are there and they are used in abundance uh, in, in um, uh, Ayurveda. Similarly, uh, uh, synonyms of Marut uh, that is wind can also be used and this you can see on your slide Vayu, Vat, Anil. So, in some other words it would be Anil, in some other words it would be Vat. So, what Zimmerman has done is to, uh, is to uh, reduce, is to uh, replace uh, such synonyms uh, by just single word uh, that is uh, Marut or uh, suppose it is nation or kar and so forth 
it is replaced by plus or minus sign. And when you do that, uh, what you find is the bare skeletal uh, uh, architecture of Ayurveda in terms of uh, uh, the impact of a particular, uh, uh, a particular formulation on the tridosh, uh, uh, kapha, vayu and pith that is laid bare. So, uh, th this is something that highlights how uh, uh, literary paddings uh, are done, how and, and why, why uh, there was need to do all these things is uh, probably because uh, these verses had to be remembered. Please uh, understand that uh, the major way in which knowledge was preserved in ancient India was uh, through oral tradition and uh, orality here is uh, so important uh, in terms of uh, knowledge uh, dissemination and uh, preservation. And therefore, a uh, lot of literature or literary uh, flavoring uh, also happens uh, in, in uh, these treatises which otherwise are technical medicinal treatises. So, uh, that, that uh, accounts for, of course, it creates a lot of uh, problems in terms of interference uh, which may not always be technically right. Uh, in terms of medicinal doctrines and so forth, it can uh, at times give rise to some confusions and distortions, but uh, that was a constraint uh, within which the knowledge had to travel, uh, the knowledge had to be composed and uh, disseminated. So, uh, if we are historically sensitive to the context in which such knowledge is getting created, one will end up appreciating uh, the, these, uh, the, these things. Uh, so, uh, what we have done through these two illustrations is to just uh, highlight the uh, transdisciplinary or interdisciplinary character of the ancient Indian medicine. And uh, probably this was true for other disciplines also and this is, this is one of the, uh, you can say one of the uh, cultural traditions uh, born of uh, what uh, the West calls Indic. So, it, it is, uh, it is uh, this way. Now, let us come to the other uh, part of our, uh, our uh, lecture today and that is uh, conceptualizations. Now, all of us know that conceptualizations, for example, uh, today uh, in the uh, mainstream western medicinal treatment, uh, there are uh, formulations, there are uh, treatments which are premised on empirical observation all right, but that is that's, uh, also on the anatomical details of human body. So, uh, human anatomy is known, we deploy so many advanced techniques uh, uh, of viewing things. Now, we are told of the three dimensional uh, picturizations that can be done and so forth, but these things were not available to uh, the ancient Indian uh, uh, ancient Indian physicians and uh, of course, again uh, resorting to the same uh, cultural and historical sensitivity, sensitivity of the times, the constraints of the time, uh, the context of the time that we are talking of, uh, these anatomical details were not very precisely known and uh, in the absence of that, there were some imageries imageries drawn from nature, imageries drawn from ecology, imageries drawn from the uh, area around, uh, around uh, which uh, people lived and those imageries and uh, visualizations were used very imaginatively to understand uh, human physiology. And uh, therefore, uh, some of the conceptualizations that can be uh, that can be uh, discerned in uh, ancient Indian medical literature uh, highlights uh, the way in which people saw the things around them. For example, uh, the first point that you can see polarization of space. So, uh, when uh, people saw the space around them, they categorized it, they, uh, they used binaries, uh, which, which you can see on your slide, binary opposition, penchant for classification, sequencing. These are some of the things that you will encounter whenever you uh, read any uh, ancient Indian medical treatises. It abounds in sequenced accounts of quite a few things, several categories, 
several uh, for, for example um, a day is divided into several uh, categories uh, um, uh, some plants are divided some uh, medicinal formulations are divided into some uh, uh, some disorders are divided into several things uh, the rasas uh, we have already mentioned are divided into six similarly there are several categorizations that are done uh, today you can say that well they are not very objective uh, categorizations in the sense that there is lot of element of uh, anthropomorphic, uh, anthropomorphic because, because uh, uh, or uh, you can say anthropocentric not anthropomorphic and anthropocentric because uh, they are all concerned uh, with uh, what it does to human beings so uh, that uh, problem is there. But uh, again, uh, as I say that one has to uh, see things with respect to the uh, times and uh, it is in that context that I am talking of these polarization of space and binary oppositions uh, of west and east, center and margins uh, and we can see that uh, through several other uh, examples also uh, uh, and that is something that uh, we are going to see uh, just now. Yeah. So, uh, for example, when we say of uh, binaries, uh, when you read the Ayurvedic texts, you come across uh, categories, categories like uh, jungle desh, anup desh or jungle category of uh, animals, anup category of animals, some other uh, descriptions, uh, uh, for example, of soil, of uh, topography also match these uh, uh, binaries or polarization of space. In fact, uh, uh, Zimmerman uh, whom I uh, quoted earlier uh, goes on to say uh, that uh, the jungle desh uh, in uh, Ayurvedic treatises actually match uh, or they are coterminous with uh, the malaria frontiers of India. For example, jungle desh is the area where malaria is an epidemic. Anup Desh is an area where malaria is endemic. So, uh, as per the description of Jangal Desh and Anup Desh, what you find uh, through these medical treatises is uh, Jangal Desh uh, actually refers to those dry areas where rainfall is scanty, where vegetation is sparse. Uh, and by and large, it is a plain kind of terrain uh, bereft of uh, much of mountains and so forth. And uh, that is how generally dry conditions is something that uh, defines uh, Jangal Desh as opposed to Anup area which is marshy area where uh, uh, there are a lot of forests uh, and uh, it is it's full of uh, vegetation. Uh, the uh, northeastern part of India would be part of uh, Anup uh, area, Bengal would be part of Anup area. And uh, of course, there are there is some privileging of one over the other, which is entirely cultural. But that's how things are categorized, uh, or they stand categorized in in uh, medicinal treatises. So uh, west and east uh, that uh, just gives you reference to uh, jungle desh and anup desh. I just refer to, for, for example, Rajasthan. Uh, uh, area which is uh, dry and uh, where um, uh, particular kinds of animals abound, so their meat would be good for um, uh, for uh, uh, correcting the tridosh in uh, some ways, whereas anup uh, animal meat would be uh, good in in rectifying uh, the tridosh in some other cases because uh, because of the presumptions that uh, some animal meat is uh, is uh, access accentuating kapha vayu pit or it is diminishing kapha vayu and pit and so forth. Similarly, there is uh, there is a polarization in uh, polarization of space with respect to center and margin. This is not only at the macro level, even in the micro regions, uh, center is preferred over, uh, over the margins and uh, this kind of categorization, this kind of polarization is something that we see all across uh, the medical treatises. And uh, these are some of the things, these are some of the categories is born of the medical treatises, but they were uh, as I told you that uh, its permeation was uh, was phenomenal. So, even if you read say Cotillia's Arthashas, you do come across these uh, terminologies which essentially are medical terminologies like uh, jungle, anop and so forth and uh, center and margin uh, spacing uh, that is that is spoken of and 
uh, agri agrarian communities are uh, are said to prefer center over the margins and that's how uh, uh, that's how uh, expansion of uh, peasant communities over uh, virgin land or over existing uh, forests happen so uh, uh, amongst the set of uh, conceptualizations that we are examining uh, we have already spoken of the polarization space and binaries let's come to the third uh, third uh, conceptualization that we uh, get to see uh, in ancient indian medicine and that you can see on your slide presumption of cosmic physiology uh, and what i mean here is uh, how uh, those uh, imaging is done how people see the things around them and how they uh, how they made sense of say human physiology how the human body works now in order to understand this uh, in the absence of very detailed awareness about human anatomy and so forth uh, at that point of time in ayurved uh, one can see the glimpse of the uh, cosmic physiology and the understanding of it and its counter position on human physiology in order to understand so uh, ever since uh, the rigvedic period we get to hear of the agni and som uh, dichotomy fire and water dichotomy so agni is the source of coolness agni is the source of water uh, sorry agni is the uh, source of dryness agni is the source of fire and uh, som that is uh, uh, chandrama Uh, is the source of coolness it's the source of water and uh, uh, say uh, you have soil uh, you have uh, land over which uh, sun shines and uh, that is how uh, it it uh, dries up the uh, the wetness of the soil which it receives from uh, chand that is som and uh, the uh, soil is full of uh, or the land is full of several uh, tubes and capillaries uh, through which all these uh, coolness or the wetness uh, is transmitted it is here that they get assimilated all the rasas get assimilated over that uh, soil grows some plants those plants are consumed by some animals who end up uh, absorbing those rasas and uh, assimilated uh, aspects of uh, the ingredients then those eaters get eaten by some other animal so an eater is eaten by some other animal and eventually when that animal dies they again come back to the same soil and that is how the cosmic physiology the cycle uh, gets made and uh, the agrarian society uh is very much aware of it drainage system of uh, the soil and so forth the source of heat the source of fire and the source of coolness the source of wetness and so forth and uh, amazingly when you get to see ayurvedic formulations or understanding of digestion itself you find that this cosmic physiology understanding is very much evident so uh, the world is seen as a sequence of cooking operations or digestions and uh, for example uh, digestion uh, how it happens now the imagery here that is used uh, probably in uh, ayurved is that of cooking the sanskrit word for cooking is pach the sanskrit word for digestion is also pach the same word is used for both and uh, uh, for example uh, if if someone is feeling hungry uh, or uh, a prerequisite for digestion to happen is jatharagni jatharagni is that digestive fire which which uh, uh, which uh, which uh, renders the uh, food that has been uh, uh, consumed uh, uh, it it uh, it uh, uh, cooks them the way cooking is done uh, uh, as seen by people Uh, in the uh, abdomen in the uh, human body and uh, then several rasas are uh, uh, absorbed by dhatus uh, tissues and that's how transformation goes on happening in the human body ultimately leading to uh, its its uh, transformation into veer and so forth so that is how and there are detailed accounts of uh, all these uh, uh, all these stages of digestion 
that are there in uh, Ayurvedic treatises. The point that we are trying to make here is that uh, perhaps it is the cosmic physiology model that is used to understand and make sense of the process of digestion or human physiology here. Now, it is very interesting and that you shall uh, that you will see in your next slide as well that these principles uh, say uh, in centuries before the common era uh, find reverberation uh, even in the Greek tradition. So, uh, the uh, Hippocrates who is regarded as the father of uh, medicine, western medicine, even uh, physicians even today uh, take oath in Hippocrates uh, name. So, Hippocratic oath and uh, that is how it goes, but it is it's, uh, it's wonderful to find that uh, ancient Indian treatises uh, were talking of these principles whose reverberations are seen uh, in, in, uh, in uh, Greek tradition of uh, medicine as well. And uh, we shall talk about it, we shall see uh, them in the next slide. Similarly, uh, the other trait, uh, the other conceptualization that we encounter uh, or that uh, we get to see uh, in ancient Indian medicine is the emphasis on moderation, balance, equilibrium. So, uh, some kind of a balance and this is something again which is so much cultural and even religious. For example, uh, Buddhist preachings emphasize this uh, a lot and uh, the, the Madhya Marg or uh, balance uh, amongst different uh, uh, components of life and so forth that is regarded as desirable and this is something which uh, we get to see uh, in uh, ancient Indian uh, medicine as well in Ayurveda also. Uh, for example, good health is understood with respect to a proper balance, desirable balance of Kapha, Vayu and Pit and any, uh, any, uh, uh, any uh, you can say lack of balance or this uh, any rupture of this balance is something which uh, leads to several diseases, uh, which leads to several problems and uh, treatment is uh, to uh, restore the same equilibrium back to its proper proportion. So, there is a lot of emphasis uh, on moderation, balance and equilibrium and we will see that this particular uh, angle, this particular imagery or conceptualization is again something that uh, whose, whose uh, reverberations are seen in the Greek tradition. Uh, and uh, we are we are saying in the contemporary period that is uh, we are we are uh, picking up examples from the same period from where uh, indic and the greek uh, traditions uh, can be compared so um, uh, these days we get to hear of connected histories you have uh, the famous historian sanjay subramaniam who who talks a lot about connected histories and uh, uh, how uh, how the societies and communities uh, are to be understood to have uh, existed in uh, some porous relation uh, with each other. That is how the ideas travelled and so forth. So, one has to exercise caution here, uh, look for details, see if uh, such principles are uh, available elsewhere also and they belong to the same time, they can be historically consistent um, in, for uh, analysis uh, in cross-cultural purposes and so forth. So, this opens up a very good area in which fu future researches can happen as well. Similarly, uh, the last point that I want to emphasize in terms of conceptualization is the belief in an osmosis between living beings and their environment. This is something that has to do with ecology and, and uh, this aspect of uh, ancient Indian medicine or Ayurveda is uh, duly emphasized also. There is a uh, lot of ecological accentuation in, our, uh, in uh, Ayurvedic uh, formulations, in Ayurvedic uh, conceptualization, in Ayurvedic prescriptions also. So, man uh, not seen merely in terms of uh, the anatomical whole that he is or she is, but uh, man with respect to the area, the physiology of the terrain, with respect to the soil, with respect to the air, with respect to the surrounding in which uh, he or she lives. And that is uh, that's something which is, which is so central to Ayurvedic uh, imageries, Ayurvedic understanding. And so, uh, whatever, uh, whatever 
uh, whatever prescriptions are given uh, to uh, to uh, for uh, particular diseases keep this in mind and man is seen uh, with respect to the environment uh, that he uh, lives in so dry area wet area uh, some some areas will have uh, propensity for some diseases other areas which are diametrically opposed to it will have uh, less propensity for that and so uh, uh, animals and plants uh, derived from the opposite areas will uh, even out or will negate the accentuated effect uh, coming from the opposite area and that's how the prescriptions and formulations go in ayurved and uh, this slide uh, right in front of you now that you can see uh, is about that cosmic physiology and its comparison from indic to greek tradition so on the uh, left of your screen you can see the indic uh, uh, details for example circulation of fluids uh, agni som cycle which is present uh, ever since the rigvedic times we referred to that then chain of successive cooking by sun fire and digestion involving an interplay of combinations and metamorphosis this is something which is uh, referred to uh, in the uh, indian uh, tradition time and again in different treatises not only medical treatises but even otherwise on account of the interdisciplinary uh, way in which knowledge was acquired and disseminated on the right of your screen you see the uh, greek uh, counterpart for example hippocrates uh, who belongs to uh, 460 to 377 uh, before uh, the beginning of the common era period uh, is regarded as the father of medicine we discussed that and uh, in his book uh, which is titled on regimen he speaks of uh, the circulation of fluids and uh, the greek uh, the greek tradition also uh, highlights fire uh, fed by water so that uh, dichotomy of fire and water is known to them as well now how it traveled whether there was some kind of a universal acceptance of these principles or different communities through different techniques get, got to know about it or it is a consequence of uh, contact with the indic or indic with the uh, hellenistic or greek so that is something that uh, one can work out but it is remarkable that the two traditions knew about it and they were using the same imageries uh, to understand and make sense of human physiology human health remedies of uh, various diseases and so forth similarly uh, the other point that i spoke of is the balance or equilibrium aspect which is uh, very accentuated in uh, uh, ancient indian uh, as well as the greek uh, medicinal tradition uh, where uh, you find in ayurved uh, charak as well as uh, shushrut talk about samyog and sangyog is uh, sangyog is mixing whereas you get to hear of sanskar now sanskar is perfecting sanskar is something that the cooks do so uh, when uh, this is about culinary practices this is about cooking of food and i told you that the cooking of food is something which goes as a strong uh, imagery uh, in understanding uh, several uh, physiological processes of human uh, existence like say digestion so forth so cooking of food and its counterposition on uh, human physiology and so forth uh, in order to understand or make sense of digestion so uh, it is one thing to just mix ingredients but uh, a good cook does more than that uh, he uh, or she uh, mixes it in a proper proportion and uh, intervenes to uh, transform the uh, nature of these ingredients into something else uh by intervening and uh, that is what uh, cooking is all about and uh, similarly a good physician in uh, ayurved would also take ingredients mix it up in proper proportion and try to transform the original nature of those ingredients into the desired uh, na- uh, into the desired attributes which could be good for uh, a particular uh, patient 
and please uh, note here that uh, quite unlike the present practice which uh, is which is a transformed practice after 19th century colonial experience when ayurved uh, uh, fought its battle for survival in the light of the uh, coming of western medicine so you have mass uh, uh, formulations you have uh, you have bottled uh, medicines even in ayurved but uh, if you read the text in its pristine purity you find that these things are late additions and uh, uh, otherwise uh, ayurvedic uh, formulations are to be administered not in general but uh, in a very personalized and customized way for specific uh, diseases of specific persons understanding quite a few other things taking into account the uh, ecological aspect the taking into account the surroundings uh, where the person has lived and so forth so uh, these things are to be and uh, similarly there is a distinction made uh, between uh, uh, sanyog and samyog samyog is equal mixture of congruence to make uh, or restore equality of humors and so forth and similarly in greek tradition also we find uh, uh, and that you can see on your slide uh, akemion of uh, uh, croton mentions that uh, health results from the uh, isonomia of uh, contraries isonomia again is the same mean the the, the balance that uh, that we spoke of so the element of compensation uh, for contraries uh, moderation of extremes is something uh, that is that is uh, of uh, some value even in uh, greek uh, conceptualization of uh, medicine and health hippocrates uh, in another book uh, written by him on ancient medicine talks of uh, the concept of crises and crises is temperament uh, or uh, uh, efforts to achieve the correct mean and correct mean again uh, so it it uh, re reverberates with the concepts of uh, uh, sanyog uh, samyog uh, or the balance uh, of uh, the three doshas kapha vayu pit and so forth so uh, there there are striking parallels that we can see and we can deploy uh, modern historical techniques which are very recent and sophisticated like the connected histories that we spoke of with respect to sanjay subman's proposition to understand and make sense of these similarities so uh, uh, the greek tradition and the indic tradition of uh, of uh, medicinal uh, conceptualizations uh, etc do have fair degree of similarities similarly the last uh, point that i refer to with respect to conceptualization was the osmosis where the idea of ecology uh, becomes very accentuated in ayurved so osmosis between creatures and environment again it opens up ground for viewing them as uh, uh, with, with the with the perspective of connected history uh, for example jungle meat anup meat and the sadharan meat uh, are imbued in ayurved with specific therapeutic properties and this is in line with the environmental attributes of the three categories for example duck meat is wet uh, because it lives in marshes so uh, the ecological condition in which uh, a particular animal thrives or lives that attribute is transposed to its original nature and uh, so uh, if it is consumed then it will uh, accentuate or diminish a particular dosh because the environmental con the environmental condition in which it thrives is of a particular kind now this way of understanding things is something which can be seen even in the greek tradition for example hippocrates uh, in the book uh, on regimen speaks of resemblance uh, through contagion or proximity so uh, if if uh, something is uh, thriving in a particular environment it is likely to get imbued with the attributes of that environment and uh, so uh, this is what osmosis is all about so uh, something entering into uh, uh, some other body and uh, the elements of uh, the other body uh, getting uh, transmitted to the in, uh, to the context or environment in which it is thriving so uh, living beings in the uh, immediate environment is something uh, which is which is studied or understood uh, as thriving in relation to each other so these are some of the key concepts where we get to see uh, 
the, the uh, possibility of a parallel between the two uh, Indic and the Greek. And this uh, slide as you can see uh, is uh, about uh, Sanjay Subramaniam's uh, explorations in connected history and uh, one of the uh, ways in which we can understand uh, the basic idea that he is trying to put across is that societies that existed in the old and the new world prior to European imperial hegemony were participants in a nascent modernity that was taking place organically and chaotically on a global level rather than being engineered by European states. So, this is in some other context that he has referred to it. What I am hinting at is that uh, it can open up uh, the possibility of looking at uh, Indian medicine and the Greek medicine and establishing some bit of uh, some bit of uh, uh, new understanding about how, how things went on. Now, uh, just uh, briefly, I would mention about the institutions because that was another, uh, another, uh, another thing that, is, that goes in the today's title of uh, discussion. Uh, it is about uh, conceptualizations and institutions of ancient Indian medicine. So, uh, for example, uh, hospitals uh, or a clinic uh, as early as uh, the period of Charak. Right. So, we are talking of centuries prior to the beginning of the common era. We get to see a very vivid account of what a hospital should be. And uh, in this slide, you can see uh, Charak uh, who mentions about hospitals and the, uh, the uh, hospital building. Uh, and I uh, quote, I shall now point out in brief the various supplies. Thus, an expert in science of building should first construct a worthy building. It should be strong, out of wind, and part of it should be open to the air. It should be easy to get about in, uh, get about in and should be uh, not in a depression. It should be out of the path of smoke, sunlight, water, or dust, as well as unwanted noise, feelings, tastes, sights, and smells. It should have a water supply, pestle, mortar, lavatory, and bathing area, and a kitchen. Now, just look at this description and uh, it, it seems that uh, Charak is talking of uh, today's times, uh, the, the desirab desirability uh, of a hospital in terms of its building and uh, building facilities. Uh, similarly, while talking to the staff uh, of the hospitals, he speaks of after that one should select the staff of soup, rice, cooks, uh, bath attendants, messers, people who help patients with getting up and sitting down. So, these are some of the attributes and facilities related to the staff uh, who would be manning these hospitals and they should not be reluctant to work and so forth. They should be accomplished in several other uh, um, skills like they should be able to sing, play instruments, perform recitations as well as being skilled in verses, songs, stories. So, these are some of the techniques that even uh, mainstream Western medicine is trying to adopt these days. And uh, this is something which is mentioned in Charak Sangeeta. Similarly, in terms of supplies, you can see on your slide a, a range of uh, facilities in terms of uh, pharmacy and uh, the, the sheer fact that the hospital was visualized uh, with pharmacy. So, pharmacy being an intrinsic element of hospital uh, in terms of facility and uh, th these are marvelous things uh, that, that uh, goes on to uh, tell us about, uh, about the uh, ancient Indian uh, conceptualizations and uh, institutions of hospitals. Of course, hospital uh, and, and if, you, if you say that uh, uh, what is the big deal in uh, Charak uh, saying this because he himself is a physician. Fahyan, who visited uh, in 5th century uh, common era, uh, Pataliputra, uh, he talks of hospitals and the description you can see on, on your slide, uh, he, he, he uh, writes, these cities and towns of this country are greatest of all the middle kingdom, the inhabitants are rich and prosperous and vie with each other in the practice of benevolence and righteousness, the heads of the Vaishya families in uh, them established the cities, uh, the cities houses for dispensing charity and medicine. All the poor and destitute in the country, orphans, widowers and ch childless men, mimed people and cripple, uh, uh, cripples uh, and all who are diseased go to these houses and are provided with every kind of help and the doctors examine their diseases, they get food and medicine um, which their cases require and are made to feel at ease. 
and when they are better they go them uh, go away themselves so this tells you about uh, what today we can call civic hospitals cosmopolitan hospitals and uh, this is something that is uh, referred to uh, in these um, accounts uh, which are uh, accounts left by chinese travelers so in sum what we have seen today is uh, some of the conceptualizations and institutions that are uh, that are uh, recurrently present in ancient indian uh, medicinal treatises and uh, uh, even uh, beyond the domain of their therapeutic aspect they in, uh, they they illuminate the social and cultural uh, lives of uh, ancient india early india uh, in ways that we generally uh, don't uh, know about so that was it and uh, thank you for hearing me out